Welcome everyone, my name is Jessica Deposquallow and on behalf of Quest and our amazing customer success team, we want to thank you for taking the time to join us today. We have one of my personal favorites and all-time greatest, Clay Jackson, here to tell you about the latest and greatest features that Shareplex has to offer. Please stick around following today's session as we take a moment to answer your questions live. Thanks Jessica for the introduction and uh, welcome and uh, welcome everyone to the Shareplex 101. Uh, what's new in Shareplex? Uh, my name is Clay Jackson. I, as Jessica said, I'm a senior sales engineer here at uh, Quest. Been around for almost 10 years doing uh, Shareplex and other things. And as you can see on the slide, Shareplex has been around for 26 years. But during that 20 that we've been doing the replication, uh, things have changed, right? Data movement is evolving. Uh, we've got a whole bunch of rapidly changing environments. Always on is now a thing, right? I mean, 10 years ago, uh, always on and DR and HA were uh, new things, new, new, to, new to everybody. We all had to do it, but it was uh, brand new or, or pretty brand new unless you were in a specific industry that needed that from the uh, start. Now it's a thing. It's, it's ubiquitous. You have to be always on. Uh, if you're not always on, some customer is going to go somewhere else and you're going to lose business. Got a whole bunch of impressive lightning, licensing costs. Uh, licensing costs. Everything costs more. Um, everybody's trying to get uh, more for their money and do more with less. Uh, and data's king. Uh, a lot of people were referring to data as the new oil. So your data now is becoming much more important than it has. Um, so data movement. Yeah, we know you've got some technology options. Uh, data movement has, uh, as I said, changed a lot. Uh, a lot more to it now. You can do a lot of real-time data sync. Uh, you've got flexible, scalable integration with APIs and microservices and data integration and those kind of things. But we still think that Shareplex is highly relevant, right? You've got your options there, but um, what are they? Well, you can try some new data streaming tools and some integration, but those are new, they're risky, um, and they cost a lot. Uh, APIs and microservices Boy, revamping your whole development environment to, to support that. You're probably well underway to do that, but um, supporting that is is expensive and time-consuming. Um, if you look at CDC, change data capture, logical replication, that's still a really viable alternative. Low cost, uh, low risk, and you can get to where you need to be. So how do we do that with SharePlex? Uh, SharePlex is very efficient, uh, still has... Real-time data capability, uh, no impact on your source systems, and we've got support for compliance and auditing and lots of other things as well. So all of your initiatives can probably be around data moving and probably be supported by uh, SharePlex or by something using data replication. Um, here's some of the use cases for SharePlex, uh, data availability, data scalability, data integration. I won't talk too much about those. If you're already a SharePlex customer, you know about those, and if you're not, you're probably looking at one or two specific use cases and we'll show you how SharePlex can help you with those. Um, so what hasn't changed in SharePlex? Before we talk about what's changed, we'll talk about what hasn't changed. 25 years of very solid, very repeatable uh, replication architecture. We're doing replication for thousands of companies around the world that have been with us for a very long time and are still very happy with our replication solution. We still have a source and a target. Um, Bidirectional replication now, so you have a, the source can also be a target for replication, either from your uh, other target or from multiple targets. We have one customer that's doing six-way replication between systems for mastery data management, so there's lots of things you can do there. Our processes and queues are still there for uh, reliability and robust uh, configuration, so you don't have to stop your replication or your change data capture and reinitialize things every uh, so often, uh, we pride ourselves in guaranteeing that once you've started replication, you shouldn't have to stop it again for something having to do with SharePlex. When I was in a major customer before I came to, uh, to uh, Quest, we had uh, SharePlex were running it for about uh, eight years. And during that time, we never had to restart replication because of a problem with SharePlex. We had to restart replication a couple of times because we moved hardware and did some other things and, and some changes. But... Never because of a problem with SharePlex. SharePlex was always reliable and there when we needed it. And oh, by the way, it only took about half an hour a month to uh, manage as well. So very, very uh, low, low impact, low management once we got it set up and running. 
Another thing that hasn't changed is our award-winning 24 by 7 support. We consistently receive CSAT uh, customer satisfaction scores in the 90th percentile and above, and we're still there for you. Um, when you call support, you're going to be talking to an engineer with 13 or more years of experience with SharePlex and the knowledge to help you get back up and running and get your issues solved very quickly. Um, we, in fact, have some service level agreements around our support, not to resolution, but if you call us uh, with regular support on a priority one problem, we'll call you back within an hour. You can cut that to 25 minutes to 30 minutes if you use Premier Support. So lots of support options. Support is still there and hasn't really changed at all. So what's new? The big thing that's new and the thing we introduced in version 11 of SharePlex is SharePlex for Postgres. In addition to Oracle as a source, which we've supported for 26 years, we can also now support Postgres as a source. The good news is that it was fairly easy to do that because we have the capture mechanism all set. We have all our processing queues set. And so it was pretty easy to refactor SharePlex so we can add another source. Um, not something we want to do every day, and we're not necessarily talking about adding more sources, but for Postgres, because of the up-and-coming uh, nature of Postgres and the fact that everybody's looking at it these days, uh, we decided that was a that was something we needed to do. So use cases we have. Um, first one is Oracle to Postgres. If you want to do a migration, we can help you with that. We can help you move your data from Oracle to Postgres. And oh, by the way, we can also do bidirectional replication between Oracle and Postgres. So I can have Oracle as a uh, source going to Postgres, and then I can take that data that I'm changing in Postgres and replicate it right back to Oracle. So I have the two systems in sync at all times. That lets you avoid the big bang migration and doing a migration all at once with an all or nothing. You know, you flick a switch and you pray that your new environment comes up and that it's uh, the way you want it to be. Well, with bidirectional replication, you can migrate a couple of users or a couple of applications. Most databases these days support more than one application. So you got a big database, you want to migrate to Postgres. Try it out a little bit. Try try a small my uh, small application that uses part of the database. Only migrate a couple of tables. Only migrate a couple of users, and then try it out with bidirectional replication. You can do that and make that happen. Um, Postgres HA and DR. Uh, Postgres is kind of where Oracle was about 20 years ago, right? HA and DR are just coming onto the Postgres scene. People are using Postgres for more and more mission critical applications, and they need that HA, HA and DR capability that's not necessarily built into the product. Well, with SharePlex, you have that. And again, unlike some of the uh, other processes that are out there, you're not using the same database. You have two databases. So a database doesn't become a single point of failure when you're talking about either HA or DR. Um, there's workload distribution. you got a big Postgres database. You want to do some analytics and some other things. Um, you want to do it with a smaller database, maybe take only analytic data. If you're in a uh, clinical setting or some setting where you have a whole bunch of private information, you don't want to replicate that private information to your analytics space. Keep your analytics space clean so you don't have to worry about HIPAA or other uh, compliance issues with your analytics space. Doing that with selective replication, which Postgres, which SharePlex is always capable of doing and always available to do for you. Um, targets. Any SharePlex target. So you want to do Postgres to Kafka, we can do that. You want to do Postgres to Azure, you've got some analytics in Power BI or Azure or someplace in Azure, we can do that. You want to do on-prem uh, Postgres or Oracle, you want to move that to AWS or one of the uh, Postgres cloud offerings, as long as it's real Postgres and not um, uh, something else under the covers, uh, we can do that. We can certainly do Azure and Aurora and uh all of the offerings uh, in the cloud and also now uh, Google Cloud Platform and uh, Oracle uh, Cloud as well. Uh, some caveats here, talk to us about it, but we do fully support um, cloud environments as well as on-prem and also cloud back to on-prem. You've got a Postgres database in Amazon or Azure and you want to replicate that back to an Oracle database on-prem to keep track of some old application that can't change. Maybe you have to Maybe you have a large database with, a database with 12 applications and 11 of them can move to Postgres and the 12th one can't. Well, rather than leaving everything tied in Oracle on your on-prem system, just move to Postgres for all the um, 11 that can move and then replicate the data that that Oracle system needs back to a smaller Oracle database. Maybe you can even go to Standard Edition instead of Enterprise Edition and save yourself some more money there. Get out from under those licensing costs. Um, 
so any target. As I mentioned earlier, uh, true bidirectional replication, uh, the ability to move data between the two environments and um, with uh, no, uh, no, no real limitations there. You see the same thing in Postgres that you see in Oracle and uh, vice versa. And we have the ability to do conflict resolution. So if you're doing updates on both sides and someone updates a column in the Postgres database and tries to update that same column in the Oracle database, we'll tell you about it. And out of the box, we give you a couple of options to deal with that problem. The first is you can say, okay, my Oracle source is a, tr is a source of truth, so make the Postgres database look like Oracle regardless, or make the Oracle database look like Postgres regardless. You can do either one of those. Or you can say, look at a timestamp on the transaction. If a timestamp occurred at a later date on the Postgres side, that's the winner. If it occurred later on the Oracle side, that's the winner. So you can do all those out of the box. Now, if that's not enough, we do have the ability to call a uh, procedural routine, either PG, PL SQL in Postgres or a PL SQL in Oracle, where you can do anything you want. You can make any changes you want and, and take uh, do anything you need to do for conflict resolution. So um, those are available right now and available for you. Um, let's talk a little bit more detail. Let's go into a little more detail on this exactly. Um, right now we support for Postgres Source, Community Edition, and EDB, and also uh, the Amazon uh, RDS Aurora uh, with that. We do logical replication. If you're in the cloud or using database as a service, uh, we can't run processes on the database server, so we are limited to doing logical replication there. If you're doing physical uh, servers and have Postgres running in a physical environment, either in an EC2 environment or an Azure uh, infrastructure environment or OCI uh, uh, bare metal, uh, we can do physical replication or logical replication with Postgres. You can make either one of those work. So again, AWS or Azure uh, and physical or logical replication. Now the way we do that is by reading the uh, wall center. We read the wall center information. But unlike Postgres, native Postgres replication, when you're doing native Postgres replication, you're winding up with your target database kind of joined at the hip to the source because until the uh, record is posted on the target, you can't delete it from the source. You have all those unused dead tuples and you have your wall files that you have to keep track of and maintain. Or you get so far behind in replication, you have to kind of throw up your hands and say, well, we're going to restart replication from scratch. Well, with Postgres, you remember back to, with SharePoint, excuse me, you remember back to our um, uh, diagram and our architecture. Once we capture the transaction, once we read the transaction from Postgres, we uh, guarantee that we're going to get that transaction over to your source, over to your target database, and keep it there or we're going to tell you why we couldn't land it in your target database. So your transaction is safe with us and safe with SharePlex. That's why all the processes and queues. That means that we can release Postgres to continue and go on with the wall record and writing that wall uh, to disk and archiving it or getting rid of it and also clearing out your dead tuples so you don't have to worry about that. You can run vacuum and uh, you won't be stuck with a bunch of uh, dead tuples and blow it on your Postgres side because SharePlex has got the transaction and we've got your back moving it over. Um, we use ODBC to do most of our work in the Postgres environment. Uh, we're uh, pretty confident that, that that's going to give you the performance you need. We've done some extensive performance testing and not seen any real details there. But beyond that, it's the same architecture and the same support. So all the same things you're used to with um, SharePlex, you can continue to get with uh, SharePlex for Postgres, um, just initial added features and added source. And as I said, you can go to any target you want to go to. So SQL Server, you want to go Postgres to SQL Server, we can handle that. Or Postgres to uh, Kafka or Azure Event Hub or uh, maybe you have an S3 gateway. One of our customers is working with S3 and has an S3 gateway we can land data in that S land that change data in the S3 gateway and do that. As you might imagine, we've invested a lot of uh, development in uh, SharePlex over the last couple of years. Is how we got to where we are with the new version, release 10 of SharePlex, which is the uh, the current version. If you're in a Windows environment, the things I've told you about uh, SharePlex for uh, Postgres is, as a source is only available on Linux in version 11. 
But for your Windows users, version 10 is still out there. And stay tuned. We've got a new uh, announcement coming on that uh, fairly soon that will, uh, I'm sure, be pleasing to, to Windows users. Um, anyway, in 10X, about a year ago, two years ago now, we added uh, 19C support. We added replication to Kafka, uh, remote post to SQL Server, and replication target updates for all of our other platforms. In release 11, about uh, almost a year ago now, maybe a little more than that. That's where we added uh, Postgres as a source. We added Snowflake as a target, uh, and we changed the way we do licensing. So if you go from 10 to 11, your license keys won't work, but that's a simple phone call to our licensing group, and they'll get you a new key that's going to work just fine and work the way it used to in uh, Postgres 11. In release 11.4, which is our latest version, you see we do about two or three releases a year. Our aim is to do two releases a year, but sometimes we have to do a few more because of uh, bug fixes and so on. So we're in 11.4 right now. Uh, updated targets. We added uh, JSON, JSON B, and uh, any data data types to uh, Postgres, the um, additional data types in Postgres. Um, Postgres uh, SQL compare and repair. So if you're replicating between a Postgres database and another Postgres database, we have built-in compare and repair. You can compare a table on the source and make sure that the target looks like the source. And if not, repair it to make it look like the source. So, And uh, we've got also got some news coming on heterogeneous or cross-database compare and repair. I can't give you any more information about that right now, but again, stay tuned. Um, we also added Snowflake enhancements. We improved our performance for replication of Snowflake um, significantly and... Uh, did that, and we added uh, support for IBM and Apache uh, MQ as message queuing uh, protocols and our um, increase on that. So that in uh, about 17 minutes is what's new with uh, Postgres and with uh, SQL or SharePlex for Oracle uh, and SharePlex 11.4. As I say, stay tuned. The best is yet to come. Uh, and I want to thank you all for uh, being here and, and participating in the WebEx today and looking forward to seeing you with a future SharePlex uh, 101 series, SharePlex uh, Episode 2. And uh, then on from that, we'll be doing these on a continuing basis to keep you up to date with what's going on in SharePlex and also uh, enhance your skills and capabilities. So stay tuned for that and more information. Thanks again, everyone, and have a good rest of your day.